Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So in this particular session, we'll be talking about research process. Now this is a process which is very difficult to standardize because different books have quoted uh, the research process in a different way. But I have tried to make it very simple and very clear with relevant examples so that you can understand how this whole process works. Okay, so if you like my video, do subscribe to my channel. Okay, let's begin. So the research process starts with the choice of areas of interest. First of all, the researcher has to identify the area or area of his own interest. Now that area could be any area. For example, it could be psychology, it could be economics, it could be anthropology, it could be mathematics, it could be management, could be engineering, could be sciences, it could be anything. For example, if I want to do a research into education sector, so my area of interest would be education sector. Now that's the first step to get into a research. After identifying this research area, it is also important to refine this area. So how you will refine this area? Like in education sector is like a big education sector. You're talking about school education, you're talking about higher education. What kind of education you're talking about? So you need to finalize that refinement of area of interest also. So my, my broad area would be education sector and then my refinement would be maybe a research on primary schools. That could be my refined area. Then after this, it is very very important to define the problem as I already told in that video of how consultancy companies work that define definition of problem gives the kickstart to the data analytics. So how do you define a problem? The best way is by reading an extensive literature. So what is literature? Literature is basically the research which has been conducted in the same area of research in different different cultures on different sample sizes and by different researchers. So you can go through all those studies so that that can give you a brief idea that how many people have already studied that research problem and what things they have already identified. So they will also give you an idea that in, in future, in what things you can go for a research, what could be the future scope of study. So it is very important that after defining the research problem, then from the literature, then you narrow down your research questions, you narrow down your objectives and you narrow down your hypothesis. We'll take up all these three in the week two. So then after defining the problem, in the next step, it is very important to design the framework of the study. The framework gives you the boundary of the study. For example, how the research will be conducted. So basically we have three designs of research. The first is called the exploratory research design. Second is called the descriptive research design. And third is called the causal research design. We'll all will take up all these research designs separately in the week two. So step one, defining the area of interest. Step two, identifying the problem. Step three is creating the framework for the research problem. So after designing the research design in step three, we move to step four, which is all about the methodology of the research. So in the methodology, there are three things which are very important. First you must understand on whom you are conducting the research. That means sample determination. This is a very, very important step because picking the right sample will lead to a great research. Second is what will be the sample size or what should be the right sample size or representative sample size. And the third thing is the development of the instrument for collecting data. Definitely you need to collect data. So for that purpose, you need an instrument. So in this particular process, we try to develop an instrument also. This will be taking up in the week four. The next step, we start collecting data from the representative sample, which you have already chosen in step four. So after collecting data in the next step, we code all that data into a software. That software could be any software. It could be SPSS, SAS, Python, R. You can use any of software for this purpose. And then after this, you apply all your basic as well as advanced statistical analysis on your data to meet down your objectives. So it will depend upon the objectives that what statistical tools we need to use. And then in the step seven, and that is the last step, you interpret the results given by the software and you compile it in a report. So in this way, any company or an individual can conduct a research based on these seven steps. Now from these steps, it is definitely clear that the software usage get involved in step six. That means whatever software we are using, it is 
it is used at a very later stage of our research or of data analytics so it is very very important to first understand the foundation of data analytics which lies in step 1 to step 5 and then only you will be able to code the right data into the software and the software will give you the right results so thanks for watching